Hey everybody, I've been talking about UI and it's become very clear that we do not have a shared foundation. Game dev UI programming is not taught, as far as I can tell, and a lot of game devs get really far into game dev before they realize that they don't know anything about UI programming. There are best practices and easy approaches, but they don't really get taught. And I sort of think a lot of people who say that they hate programming UI, I say, do you know how to program UI? Because maybe you just hate being lost. Well, let's try and clear that up some. This is the most basic approach for UI programming. I call it the static approach. This is a game-specific approach. It's really not the approach I'd recommend for you know tax programs or whatever, but it's very powerful in small and medium-sized games, and it's something you can do right now. So let's go ahead and learn it. You're going to need to know what a class is. If you don't know what a class is, go learn that and then come back. So a UI is for displaying data. Here is your health in your first-person shooter, some bullets, a map. Or how about an RPG where you've got a character portrait and a whole bunch of stats, and then over here you've got a list of characters, and boom, you want to have it so that when you click, it changes who gets displayed. This is the basic stuff, right? The problem is the UI is not responsible for the player's health or the player's position or the player's remaining bullets. It just has to find those values and display them. So how do you do that? Let me show you how not to do that, because I think a lot of people do it this way, and it's bad. You've got a UI class, and uh, inside of the UI class, you've got something like an update. So every frame we want to change uh, the, the values for the health and the bullets. So we have to go find those values. How do we find them? Well, in Unity, it might be something like scene.findObjectByTag, avatar. dot health, right? This is a terrible approach. A, it's slow. B, it's fragile. And C, it's inflexible. So what is fragile? Fragile is the number one reason I think game devs eventually have to just stop developing their game. Um, it, the code is so fragile that whenever they try and do anything, it breaks. They can't figure out how to get their fingers in, in, in a way that doesn't break. So an example is if you change the tag on the player object, this stops working. If you change where the avatar class is located inside the player object, this stops working. If there are two avatars in the game world, this stops working. So this is something that can randomly break when you're doing unrelated stuff and you're going to feel really annoyed and not know why. So that's what fragile is. It's also inflexible because you've taught the UI to parse the entire game state in order to figure out what the avatar is. That means that you can never tell it anything else. You can never say, well, this is a tutorial sequence, so please use someone else's health, or, you know, this is a dream sequence, or now there are two players and we're flipping between them. It doesn't understand that because it's been taught to parse the entire game state and do all of that work on its own. Don't make more work for yourself. Use a flexible and robust approach. It's easy. I'll show you it right now. It's actually even easier than that approach. The basic concept of the static approach is that the class is responsible for surfacing the instance. So let's say we've got the avatar class. The avatar class keeps track of your health and your position and your bullets remaining and all that stuff. The whole point here is that we have a public static avatar live and then in start or awake whatever you say live equals this now in case you're just beginning your programming career a static variable is one that is attached to the class rather than an instance and that means that when the ui wants to get your health it can just say avatar dot live dot health it doesn't need to search through the game world because the avatar is responsible for telling everybody else which instance of avatar is live that's pretty basic right the class is responsible for surfacing the instances this is a very robust approach because it doesn't matter what the tag or the name or the hierarchy of this avatar is it's always going to just work it's also a very flexible approach because you can point live wherever you want. 
You can point it to uninstantiated prefabs and this will work. That's pretty flexible, don't you think? Great for creating tutorials or dream sequences or events or whatever. So um, that's pretty nice. This is the beating heart of the static approach. As you might have guessed, the static approach is about using static variables. And there's one. That's how you do it. Now, this isn't everything you need to know, but this is a lot. This is like 80% of what you need to make your uh, UIs stop being annoying. Let's talk about some of the rest because this is more complicated than it seems. You've got this list of characters and maybe you've manually created the list by creating individual buttons and plunking in the characters names and faces yourself. Or maybe you've got something that auto populates and creates buttons automatically. Either way, you've got a list of buttons. And then over here, you've got the visual, which is the character's portrait and stats. And what you want is when you click the button, it goes over here and it says, Hey, you, can you display this new character? Well, let me tell, let me go ahead and show you the bad way to do this in unity. You can simply take that button and in the events section, you can add in the on click event. You drag this object into the on click event and you say display new character. And then you fill in the character value. This works, but it's inflexible and not very uh, robust. It's kind of fragile. What do I mean? Well, those two things are actually pretty cool. Don't you think there are lots of times when I want to display one without the other, right? They're not really the same object. They're two completely separate objects. This, I want to display this whenever we level up, but not that because not everybody levels up at the same time. Or you know what? I want to go on a date with someone. Let's pick someone to go on a date with, but we don't need to know their stats. Well, you could create 15 different variants of all of these, manually save all of them as prefabs, and then bring them all in and you know, try and handle all of them at any given time. And then it's like, okay, well, I got to manually reprogram all of these every time a character changes or anything like that. That's inflexible. That means that every single change you make has a chance to break everything or just not work right. It's much better if these things are disconnected and can be thrown into the game world willy nilly, because that means that you can throw them into the game world willy nilly and you can get exactly the result you want without having to break your entire program to do it. So how do you do that? Well, you just don't do this. That's, that's pointless. They, 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 this guy does not know the other guy exists. Neither of these folks know the other guy exists. So they just go through an intermediate, like say party member dot live. Oh, a static variable. Didn't we already discuss this? Yes, we did. So this thing on the left just sets that static variable. It doesn't have any other responsibilities. I mean, it like glows or whatever, but it doesn't have any other code responsibilities outside of itself. Over here, this guy, it just displays party member dot live. It doesn't really care who's setting party member dot live. So during a level up, you set party member dot live manually and it just inherits it, right? And later on, you want to do a dating sim thing? Well, here is your dating choice selection object over here on the right. Same object on the left. And again, pm.live. Shoop. And maybe you have like a date that people have to go on. Well, then you leave off that thing on the left and it's just uh, setting pm.live yourself and pumping it in. Boom. This is a super, super basic and easy approach. You decouple these things. And that allows you to use them in a much more flexible and powerful way by going through a static intermediary. I hope you understood that because it's kind of core to making your UI flexible enough uh, so that you can change things without having to spend dozens and dozens of hours trying to get it all to work. So there are still some things that I haven't covered, but this is the basic setup. This is how you make it really, really powerful. What haven't I covered? Well, events. Um, let's go ahead and cover some events. Let's say you've got your party members, right? Now you already know that the party member has various stats like name and health and level and all that stuff. And you probably already know that you want your party member to have an event. So maybe it would be like a unity event in unity or a normal C sharp event or whatever you want to make it right. So you got your unity event and it's like on character uh, stats changed or whatever, right? 
And that gets called whenever your character stats changed. And that way you know that you need to update it or notify the character and you got one like on dead and that sort of stuff, right? So you've got these events that fire off and you've got things hooked into them. You've got, it pops up and it's like, oh no, so-and-so has died. Um, shows them falling over or whatever. These sorts of events are a very powerful approach. And I know a lot of people manually check over and over and over every frame. Like if character dot health is less than or equal to zero, then character is dead. It's much more powerful to say that if character health is uh, below zero, fire off the undead um, event because you can set that event up to do all the things you need it to do. But you can also change that later if you've got characters that automatically resurrect or you want something else to happen like the sun explodes when someone dies. You can also just plug that in in the inspector. You don't have to write code for it. These are fairly basic. This is not part of the static approach because these are not static events. But you know, you can go ahead and create a static event. Static UE uh, new live or whatever you want to call it, right? And this fires off whenever you set your other static variables. And this is a great way to have your visuals not constantly chomp every frame. You can just have them only fire when something changes or needs to be changed. So you've got this setup here. Here's your character with all their stats and stuff. And obviously they sign up for the individual instance of the on character stats change because they're showing a specific character. And if that specific character stats change, they need to change what they're showing. Pretty basic, right? But they can also sign up for this guy. And whenever that guy fires, they can say, oh, I need to unsign up for this, change who I'm pointed at, and sign up for the new guy. That's the static approach. You can use static events as well as non-static events. You can use them in tandem. You can go ahead and create yourself a whole network of things that happen without having to be directly coded by you. So you don't have to set it up so that this thing over here has to be manually passed every single character it's ever going to display or anything like that. You just have it listen for the events it needs to listen to and when they fire, it changes. So you, when the button over here, when these guys start to get clicked and they set PM live, they fire off this event and then this event comes over here and changes this. That's a very, very basic approach. You use static events as well as static variables. You can also use static functions. Just learn to love the static when it comes to this sort of basic UI stuff. How powerful is this approach? How flexible is this approach? How robust is this approach? Well, that depends on your implementation skills, obviously, but I will say that there are many times when I want to display a character's stats. For example, when they're fighting, I want to pop over their head stats, you know, health remaining, um, or when they are uh, back at base, I want that to pop up off to the side while they're sitting down and be like, oh, this guy is unhappy or whatever, right? There are a lot of times I want to display that sort of stuff. How many classes do you think that should take? I only ever need one. This button, this screen, this thing, this thing, they're all the same class. They all have the same functionality. It's just a matter of whether or not they care about this value or whether or not they've been hard-coded with a specific character. Other than that, the only change is which fields are in the game object. Is there a space to write their stats? Because if there is, you write them, and if there's not, you don't. Is there an image where you put their portrait? Because if there is, you put it there, and if there isn't, you don't. That's a really, really powerful sense of freedom to say, okay, well, all I need is one display class for everything and it just works. All I have to do is create the specific visuals I want, plug the display class in and bang, it displays. And you know what? I can plug this in and I can plug this in and I can plug this in and I can just have them all work together and then I can have that all automatically send me off on a date, whatever I need. All I need to do is make sure that those objects uh, look the way I want them to look and that they're in the game world at the right time. And since they all communicate through statics, it just works. It's super easy. And if I need to change it later, I change it. I just have one class I need to edit. 
So that's the basics of the static approach. And I just wanted to make it clear that there are definitely a set of powerful tools, powerful ways of thinking when it comes to developing UI. Now, if you look up UI programming, you're probably going to find a lot of UI programming for, from things like word processors and stuff. Um, that's a very different kind of UI. Game dev UI is very powerful and complex. Uh, and there's a lot of different contexts that can pop up and down at any given time. So that's, I think, one reason why you don't hear about this sort of approach very often, because I wouldn't recommend the static approach for, you know, a, a tax program. Um, but here in game dev, with the ever-changing context and complex situation, it's a very powerful idea. The class is responsible for presenting its instances. That's it. Have a good day.